is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Hog Watch 49ers Chargers post game show. I'm your host, Borna AK Hog. Tons, absolutely so much to discuss tonight in the Chargers Niners post game show. We have things talking about from the quarterback battle, quarterback uh, Chase Daniel versus Easton Stick. We have to talk about the offensive line, how terrible Trey Pipkins was today. I want to talk about our defense, Asante Samuel Jr. with the INT. What's going on with Michael Davis as the Chargers starting outside cornerback? We have to talk about Kyler Fackrell and how impressive he was today. I want to talk a little about, about Trey Lance and what I saw, the run defense. So I want to talk about the running back two competition between Josh Kelly, Larry Roundtree. No one's separating themselves. We have to talk about the kicking battle with Michael Badgley. I think it's important. First of all, Welcome to the stream, everybody. I hope everyone's having a great, 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 great day. We're doomed if Justin Herbert gets hurt, whoever's behind center, okay? I have a philosophy on the backup position. I'm going to give you mine. But before we get into that, the 49ers beat the Los Angeles Chargers 15-10. to 10. Easton Stick goes 10-14 of 14 for 85 yards and a touchdown and a quarterback rating of 110.7. Easton Stick was by far the superior quarterback tonight. Chase Daniel was absolutely horrific. Everyone wants to debate Chase Daniel versus Easton Stick, and I'm just hoping that I get to see more of Forrest Merrill, man. That dude was stout. Here's the, here's the takeaway from today. This defense is absolutely incredible. They are stout. I have tons of confidence in this defense. Brandon Staley, he coaches with a tone of trust in his defense. He wants to win games with his defense. Even though he moved Joey Bosa to outside linebacker, he's doing that to prolong longevity in his career. He trusts Joey Bosa in coverage, not always trying to run to the quarterback. This defense will win us games. Now, when we flip to the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line struggled tremendously. Trey Pipkins is so bad at the sport of football. I'm so done with that. The offense has not been great in the first two games so far in the preseason. We have a lot to get into in today, all right? A lot to get into. Yeah, the defense, man. Yeah, even without half the starters. Yeah, the defense, he has the defense playing, okay? So let's start immediately. Let's start this game off. The Chargers starting off. At, let's go. Let's go throughout the game, right? The Chargers starting offensive line tonight was at left tackle was Storm Norton. At left guard was Matt Filer. I thought Matt Filer was actually pretty good tonight. Scott Quisenberry at center, Odai Abushi at right guard, who should start week one at Washington, and at right tackle Trey Pipkins. Terrible start for the offensive line. The Chargers offensive line they finally protected Easton Stick on the third down, but ended up throwing an incomplete pass down the middle to KJ Hill. What I've noticed was this. Trey Pipkins was getting beat on stunts, on hedges, all night long. Trey Pipkins was getting manifested. The season is not over like the Padres. I, you are correct. You are correct. Trey Pipkins was getting absolutely manhandled. Now, when we flip it over to the first defensive drive, the Chargers were in nickel to open things up defensively. Asante Samuel Jr. was in the slot. Michael Davis and Brandon Faison were on the outside. The Niners' run game was gashing our run defense early on to the game. But my God, guys, Kyler Fackrell, this guy that we got from the Giants, we all know Uchenna Nuosu is supposed to be our number one you know, rusher. But my God. Kyler Fackrell with some pressure all night long on Jimmy Garoppolo, on Trey Lance. And his pressure led him to a high throw by Jimmy Garoppolo. And Asante Samuel Jr. had an INT. And I made the mistake on my Chargers video telling everybody that, my God, Asante Samuel Jr. picked up Jimmy G in practice. He accidentally picked off Trey Lance. Well, he got Jimmy G tonight. He got Jimmy G tonight. Now we look at the second offensive drive. They were giving Josh Kelly the ball. Lots of work to Josh Kelly. I want to talk about Josh Kelly versus Roundtree, guys. Eight carries, 12 yards for Roundtree. Seven carries, nine yards for Kelly. Decent work in the passing game for both. Nothing separated themselves when one guy is 1.5 yards per carry and the other guy is 1.3 yards per carry. Okay? Bradwell is intriguing, but he didn't see the ball enough tonight. Here's the problem. You won't have guys separating themselves in these position races. At the number two running back position, no one's separating themselves. Justin Jackson's hurt. He's not getting any reps. Josh Kelly was supposed to be that guy that kind of, you know, separated himself. 
But then Larry Roundtree had that good week one, and now they both were not good tonight. So that's the deal with that. What I did notice, though, what I did notice, Matt Filer at left guard. Matt Filer at left guard. You run behind that man, and good things will happen. He looked really good tonight. The only success that we saw in the running game tonight was when we ran behind Matt Filer. All right, we ran behind Matt Filer. You guys have to remember, we got Matt Filer from Pittsburgh. He was cheap. He was an undrafted free agent, and he looks pretty good. Yes, Pipkin shot the bed big time today, Mike. Big time today. I'm going through the game. Again, now Trey Lance comes in. Kyler Fackrell making more plays. Plays. He had a couple pressures so far, and he set the edge beautifully to force a third and long. Let's go to the next offensive drive. Trey Pipkin sucks. Trey Pipkins is terrible. How is he on this team? The dude gets murdered in stunts, in hedges. They literally blow him up. How's everybody doing, man? Welcome to the stream, everybody. I know some of y'all will start pouring in here as we get into later in the stream. Welcome to the Chargers Niners post game show. Trey Pipkins is terrible, and I and we are going to talk about that man tonight. Now, where were we? Where were we? That Easton Stick play to Josh Palmer was incredible. We all know about Ethan Easton Stick's athleticism, and he's able to roll in the pocket, find find Josh Palmer, who's going to be a great NFL receiver. That takes us to halftime, but not until the Niners and Trey Lance finally looked human. Trey Lance was looking terrible to start that game. I'm not too personally too high on Trey Lance. He looks good in that second half. What I saw with Trey Lance is he holds the ball in the pocket too long. He has a really weird throwing motion. And history says you cannot be a successful quarterback if you have a really weird motion that looks forceful. Phillip Rivers is one of those anomalies. But you look at someone like Justin Herbert, he's got a beautiful motion. Even someone like a Jimmy Garoppolo, he's got a beautiful motion too. The reason he's struggling is because he doesn't have the zip of the ball like Trey Lance. Trey Lance is like a major league pitcher who throws 102 with no control. Justin Herbert throws 97, can hit 99, but he's got pristine control. Nevertheless, Trey Lance led the, led the troops down. Brandon Staley was mad at that second half. Easton Stick at halftime, 10 of 14, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Roundtree, five carries, 19 yards. Jalen Guyton, Easton Stick threw a beautiful deep ball to Jalen Guyton. So what were my overall takeaways from that first half? The secondary looked good. Sticks processing on that touchdown drive looked really good. At first, earlier on in the game, it seemed like Easton Sticks struggled in his progressions. But later on, you really saw that he started settling in. He settled in. And my God, Easton Stick looked a lot better. Next, Kyler Fackrell. This guy consistently getting pressures. We all know Uchenna Nuosu we think is going to start as he's receiving a lot of calls as well as Kenneth Murray. But Uchenna Nuosu, man, I mean, Kyler Fackrell, we're not hearing the names Kenneth Murray. We're not hearing the names Uchenna Nuosu. Who are we hearing, guys? We're hearing about Kyler Fackrell, man. Of course, bro, but we're trying to find takeaways, right? And of course, Asante Samuel Jr. This, guy, this, guy, this guy's a knack, man. He's a ball hawk. Now, what were the bad things? I don't think Josh Kelly was good. I think he was missing a lot of holes. He seems impatient. The run defense was not good. But my God, Trey God damn Pipkins. The fact that he still is on this team is mind-boggling. I agree about Kyler Fackrell. Guys, Kyler Fackrell is going to be big time this year.
All I ask is, guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the Hogwatch. Lots more to get into in tonight's game. Now, as we get into that second half, everybody, we get into that second half, and where are we, right? Chase Daniel comes in, and he was absolutely terrible. Trey Lance starts getting into a rhythm. He has the bullet to Benjamin. But in my in my in my humble opinion, and I really want to talk about this, I think it's very important. In my humble opinion, today's game shouldn't change anyone's opinion on Chase Daniel. Here's my rationale. There are two paths, as Stephen Haglund says, when you're deciding a backup quarterback. Number one, do you have a veteran starting quarterback? If you do, you draft a project. Number two, do you have a young starting quarterback? If you do, you sign a veteran. It ain't rocket science. Don't oversimplify. We're fucked either way if Herbert gets hurt, guys. Chase Daniel is the answer. He's been in Lombardi's system for years. Listen, everybody. I understand people demand Easton Stick. I understand people want Easton Stick. But again, I say this one more time. Chase Daniel's been in Lombardi's system his entire career. We don't have a veteran starting quarterback. If we were, then Easton Stick is the man. But because we have a young starting quarterback, you sign a veteran. It's pretty simple. Nevertheless, everybody, 21 penalties tonight. Still to go with 12-plus minutes in the game. This was an unwatchable football game. The punt defense sucked. The injuries continued. Looked like Ty Long got jammed in his hand. I have a question. I love Brandon Staley. I have a question, though. Why was Tyron Johnson in the game late in the fourth quarter? Why was Tyron Johnson in the game in the fourth quarter? It's weird. Now, everybody, we're going to talk about the kicking battle because nothing separated themselves from it. But, guys, yup, HH4, yep, you are very correct. You are very correct. But, guys, who led the Chargers in tackles yet again tonight? Does anybody know? Who led the ch- – oh, my God, bro. Trey Pipkins. We talked about it early in stream. We talked about it early in stream. We're we're done. We're done. He's so bad at football. But guys, who led who led the Chargers again in tackles tonight? Nick Neiman. Nicky Neiman. This guy is everywhere. I'm telling you guys. This guy is everywhere right now. He's good, guys. He's actually good. But you know who was better tonight? Forrest Merrill, man. Forrest Merrill was so impressive tonight for the Los Angeles Chargers. Constantly making plays everywhere. Forrest Merrill is absolutely incredible. It's great that these guys are finding these guys. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's honestly pretty cool that the Chargers are, are finding these guys. Again, guys, it's preseason. Nothing to hang your hat on. The offense has looked bad. But to be honest, Justin Herbert is really the only guy who drives the offense. Let's hear if we can hear Staley 
Guys, does anybody know another Chargers channel on Twitter that like posts the Brandon Staley presser? Because it's not loud enough ever on here. You guys have a volume booster? I felt like gave us a, a chance in the second half, and, and it was tough sliding out there. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I need a, I need a freaking, uh, vo I need a freaking volume booster. I need a volume booster. I don't know why the Chargers suck at it. Force Mills, a defensive lineman, man. He's, he's a twenty-five-year-old rookie. Can you guys guess where he went to school? Went to Arkansas State, man. He went to Arkansas State. Pretty, pretty incredible story. Pretty, 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 pretty incredible story. Yo, does anybody know? Does anybody know um, a good Chargers um, Twitter channel that posted videos of the presser? Um, you know, Brandon Staley on on uh, live on Asante Samuel Jr. is coming along. Quote: He likes the way he's competing and the way he's understanding the defense and asking questions. He also said that Justin Jones and Jerry Tillery earned the night off with their performance against the 49ers in joint practice. Chat, chat, what's everyone's takeaways from tonight? I'll let you I'll let you know my biggest takeaway. What's everyone's takeaways from tonight's game, though? I want to hear from you guys. How's everybody doing, man? I just can't. I we need I just cannot wait for the regular season to start. And these streams are gonna be a lot litter. What's everyone's what's everyone's takeaways though? What's your what's everyone's takeaways from tonight? Okay, so let's talk about the backup O-line. We all talk about our injury problems. We all talk about that situation. But, guys, we usually keep 10 to 11 linemen on the 53-man roster. At this point, there shouldn't be more than eight or nine because we've seen that they can't do anything besides the starters, right? So besides the starters, right, throw away the starters, right? So Rashawn Slater, um, just throw away the starters. Odai Abushi. Just throw away all the guys, Corey Lindsley, Balaga, throw away all the starters, okay? Now, and Filer. Here are the other – I am not keeping Trey Pipkins on this team. I'm going to keep Brandon Hymies. We'll, we'll talk about this. We're talking about the backup lineman to keep. Besides the starters, probably Hymies, of course. Maybe Storm Norton and Quisenberry. That's really it. That's really it. There's no reason to keep a Trey Pipkins on the team. There's no reason to keep a Hunter on the team, in my opinion. And guys, I don't want people to, you know, freak out about this whole Chase Daniel shit. Also, to all my new Chargers viewers, man, hope you guys subscribe to the channel. Daily Chargers, Padres, Lakers content, Chargers live streams coming all along this year. Mods, make sure one of you guys put the link to the Discord in the chat. But here's the situation with the whole quarterback situation. It boils down to a very simple concept. There are two paths to deciding a backup quarterback. Number one, does your team have a veteran starting quarterback? If so, you draft someone like an Easton Stick as a project. Does your team have a young starting quarterback? We do. You 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 have a veteran. You sign a veteran. Dude, I've been ready to give up on Trey Pipkins forever. We took him in the 3rd round.
Tell me why. Tell me why. I, I'm really open to discussion about this. I'm really open to discussion about this. Because at the end of the day, we're screwed either way. We're screwed either way if Herbert gets hurt, dude. We're screwed either way about it. Chase Daniel has been in Joe Lombardi's system in New Orleans. He's been behind Breeze. He's been in this system. He had a bad night tonight. You're emotionally reacting. Chase Daniel was really good in week one of the preseason. You can keep both. But I really think that because Herbert's young, I'm going with Chase Daniel. It's all, Listen, give me your two cents. I, I'm very open to this debate, but that's where I stand on that front. But my God, the, Tom Telesco and the Chargers are usually pretty good at finding guys late in the rounds. <laughs> Trey Pipkins is not one of them. Trey Pipkins is not one of them. And honestly... About tonight, tonight was a lot more about what Daniel didn't do than what Stick did do. And Brandon Staley in the postgame said we're going to take it all the way to the end when he was asked about the quarterback two battle between Easton Stick and Chase Daniel. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir, man. Tune in from Twitch. Hope hope you follow me on Twitch, my guy. Give your boy a follow on Twitch. Get some more Twitch representation here, guys. Still a lot more to talk about tonight. Oh, shit. Still a lot more to talk about in tonight's game, of course. Yeah, we're gonna talk about running back right now. We're gonna talk about my we're gonna talk about running back right now. Shameless plug the channel real quick, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter at Hogborn, as you guys can see down below on the Twitter banners right here. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitch too. If you guys are a Twitcher, sometimes go live on there only at the underscore hog underscore watch. How do you feel about the running back depth? It's not great right now, especially with Justin Jackson being hurt. Of, of course, you have Eckler, but then who's your number two guy? No one separated themselves, and I thought Josh Kelly was not that good today. Neither was Larry Roundtree, but Josh Kelly's the one that comes in with very high expectations, the former UCLA Bruin. Here's the thing, eight carries and 12 yards for Roundtree, seven carries and nine yards for Josh Kelly. Decent work in the passing game for both, but let's be real. No one separated themselves when one guy is 1.5 yards per carry in Roundtree and the other guy is 1.3 yards per carry in Josh Kelly. Listen, Bradwell's intriguing, but I wish he had more touches, right? So there's a situation where you have position battles where people aren't able to separate themselves. It's unfortunate that you don't have a number two guy. You guys, get Eckler can't play every down. Dude's going to get popped. Does that make sense? Where were we? Now, now, where were we? Where were we? Did I miss Melvin Gordon Eckler duo? Listen, M Melvin wanted his money. Honestly, we were a little stingy on that. Desmond, seems like you're new to the channel, man. Hope you subscribe. Join the hog watch. I like Roundtree so far, too. But you guys have to remember. Seriously, you, you, you guys have to remember. When did we take Josh Kelly, guys? Guys, we took Josh Kelly literally. A year ago. It's not like he's more youthful. Josh Kelly is 23. Larry Roundtree is 23. Larry Roundtree is older than Josh Kelly. Or Josh Kelly is by two months. It's not about a youth debate. It's about who's better. It's about who's better. Okay. So, guys, let's talk about the kicking battle. Let's talk about the kicking battle. 
I'm very happy. Okay. By the way, guys, I appreciate all you guys tuning into the Hogwatch. We have a really, really, really big Padres community on this channel, as you guys know. And I'm trying to grow this Chargers community as this team is just as important to me. It's just I'm now starting to kind of develop my other sports on the channel. But this this channel really grew because of the um, the Padres. But we're going to be covering the Chargers inside and out. And, you know, there's definitely things I'm, I'm working on in terms of my knowledge about the game of football. I've been a Chargers fan since the day I came out. Born and raised in San Diego, California. It was tough for me when this team transitioned. But hey, we're here and I'm 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 back. I'm back with I'm back with these guys. Also, Lakers season coming up. Where do we go with this kicking competition? We consistently see Tristan Vizcaino do better than Michael Badgley in practice. However, roles were flipped the other day when Vizcaino missed three field goals, including one field goal from 33 yards. Today, now we see today was what? Appreciate it, TSK man. Hope you subscribe, join the channel, man. Hope you subscribe, join the hog watch. I love talking sports. Now, we look at today, guys. Michael Badgley absolutely drilled that 52-yard field goal. She all joined the Discord, too. He absolutely drilled that 52-yard field goal. Guys, where, guys, honestly, where does this kicking battle take us? Who in the motherfucking Lord is going to win this kicking battle? It's literally this. Chat, everybody in the chat, who's winning this kicking battle? Make sure you like the stream, by the way, guys. Chat, who the heck is winning this kicking battle? Please. <clears throat> I have no idea at this point. I have literally... No idea at this point. You guys all think it's Badger. Dude, I don't know. Yes, sir, JD. You guys all think it's Badger. I don't know. Guys, is this too low? It's literally the loudest. I take it really seriously. I mean, I know both teams, you know, kind of, you know, 13 and 12. It's not, you know, I don't think. Can you guys hear that or no? I don't know why Chargers media doesn't post it loud enough. Let me know if you guys can hear that. If not, we won't watch it. And if anyone else has the videos on Twitter, I'd love to watch it with you guys. But I can't find it louder. I, I literally can't find it. Fowler or myself are going to be pleased with that many penalties. With that being said, it is the preseason, and you're trying to get a you know feel for how people officiate. I know that sometimes old habits die hard. You know, we had a, a lineman on a screen that kind of threw cut. You know, and, and, and Land Clark and his crew came to the West End this week and had a big meeting about that point of emphasis, you know. And so, but sometimes it's that habit of, hey, that was a left card that's been doing this a long time. And he's used to getting out on a screen. And, you know, as much as you emphasize it, sometimes you have to go through those tough lessons. And, hey, we just learned that's a 15-hour penalty. You guys got to remember, this Brandon Staley guy was literally on Vic Fangio's staff in 2017. That was his first ever NFL exposure. You fast forward four years later, he's the starting head coach of the most lucrative, probably head coaching job that was in the National Football League. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Welcome to the hog watch, guys. Welcome to the channel. Let's hear Brain Staley post game. That's a 15 hour penalty. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, we'll learn a lot from that. And uh, again, we're always trying to emphasize playing clean football because that's. Yo, Chargers Media, Chargers PR, if you're watching, make your audio louder and let us hear the questions. Ultimately, um, what leads to being a successful team because you don't want to beat yourself. And you want to give yourself a chance to win. And you don't want to lose those hidden yards uh, because of penalties. So in regards to the um, quarterback evaluation, you mentioned previously that the practices are more competitive than the preseason games. How, how is that weighted? Are you weighting the practices in? If you guys missed the question, he's asking in terms of the quarterback competition. He's talking about how it's been more intense in practices and how that translates to the game. 
think it's all it's a great question, Jim. I think it's all a part of the evaluation, you know, and I think the context matters. Um, the game environment for sure um, matters, uh, but our practices matter because it's a little bit more of a pure environment. Um, and so uh, I think that you just factor in all of it. And when we get to the end, we'll have a huge sample size to draw from and I think we'll be able to make a real accurate decision. Guys, this is not who you want, but who do you think wins this job? Who do you think wins this quarterback too? It's very interesting, right? Because Chase Daniel comes into camp and it, and it, and it seems like, and it seems like Chase Daniel is the is 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 the surefire guy. It right? It it it's it seems like Chase Daniel's the surefire guy. But but now but now it's interesting. Right? Like now you don't know. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Just you can control a lot of the variables that may, you know, hold a quarterback back from expressing himself, you know second half of this game is a, is a good example of it. I don't think Chase Daniel had a, but in a way Chase Daniel can express himself because when it's tight, is he avoiding disaster? Is he avoiding catastrophe? And I think that's what he did for the most part. It's tough out there and I appreciate the guy for it, you know? And, um, and so part of the, the quarterback evaluation process is that too. When the, when the stakes are the way they were tonight, how are you playing? I need to buy Samuel junior Jersey. And he's kind of, you know, giving a little shot here to chase Daniel. I'm so glad that we have both guys um, because most most uh, teams can't say that they have three guys like we do. Say it again. Yeah, just feel, I feel like he's asking about Michael Davis. Defense. I feel like he's still a new player to the NFL. He's been in the NFL, but he hasn't been a starter for very long. And we just kind of feel like he's one of those guys that get him get him his feet on, on the ground, get him his feet within our defense. You know, he had that hold on that third and seven. Um, which you know he's gonna learn from, but I just this is a question I brought up earlier in my stream. I had no idea why Tyron Johnson was in at the end of the game. What's up, Annabella? Alex, Alex, where do I get one? I I, I want I want a stitched one. Can you put a link? I want a stitched DeSante Samuel Jr. jersey. I don't want a printed one. I want a stitched Asante Samuel Jr. jersey. Vapor Elite. I can't find him. I want a white one. Link your boy. Link me in the Discord. Link me in the stream. Welcome to the Hogwatch, my fellow George fans. How you doing, Annabella? Just the kid being out there, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna allow him to have the confidence to become the player we, we know that he's capable of being. And I, I love where he's at right now. He's had a really good camp, and he's got a lot of confidence right now. And I think that just getting him a a, a quarter of work. Um, Nah, Tyron's healthy now. He's in the joint practice. He was playing. Justin Jackson still remains hurt. A lot for his confidence. They would have, yes. And they worked out well before the game. And um, again, like I said, I'm, I'm disappointed that we couldn't get Rashawn out there against this front during the practices because I know that he wanted to go. Uh, but he's going to be back to practice next week, and uh, we're excited yeah. to get him back. Tavon Campbell. Obviously, had the interception, but something based on my situation, DeSante, where he's behind a couple of rounds, how did you feel like, like Tavon Campbell played? I thought he competed well at times. I felt like he was connected uh, for the most part, um, especially on a couple tough routes. He's asking about Tavon Campbell. Got burned. Got burned. So he got beat on the touchdown. Um, wish I could do a better job helping him. Um, it was kind of like the deny the ball down a distance, third and four. Um, you guys see that? This is a head coach that you want to have. His player. Campbell gets beat on the touchdown to Benjamin, and he's literally said, I need to do a better job. This is a head coach that we need in Los Angeles. Somebody who actually holds himself accountable over players. If you guys are also watching my Padres videos, the problem with the, the Padres is because they don't hold themselves accountable. I talk about Jace Tingler and the coaching staff. Listen to Brandon Staley. I love this man. He gets beat on a touchdown. He says, I need to do better. Especially on a couple of tough routes. Uh, he got beat on the touchdown. 
Um, wish I could do a better job helping him. Um, I love it. Um, with the, deny the ball down a distance, third and four. Um, you know, we could have special the, the slot there to help him out. But um, he's doing well. You know, I think that he's shown that he's got traits to translate in this league. Uh, on Yo, Alex. Alex, DM me on Twitter, bro. Alex, Alex, DM me on Twitter, bro. DM me on Twitter, bro. Yes, sir, Joseph Miranda. Welcome to the goddamn Hogwatch, bro. Seems like you knew the channel. Hope you subscribe. Join the Hogwatch. Alex, DM me on Twitter, bro. Teams and corner. Kind of moved him inside. Got him some star work, too, uh, which I think was really good for him uh, because that's going to be what he has to do. He's got to be able to prove he's playing outside and inside. He's got to be a factor for us on teams. So still such a new player and – like with a lot of them, it's just consistency and performance. And I'm excited that he's he's really shown more resilience um, in this camp, which I think has been important, showing the resilience that you need as a young player uh, to bounce back. And um, felt like he had a, a good performance tonight. Would you keep three, or do you see this team having just two? It's happened before, for sure. Um, keeping three quarterbacks. He's asking about keeping three quarterbacks. A lot depends on you know, now and when that day comes in terms of – injuries and how the rest of the ro roster takes shape but um i know that i'm happy that we have three that's for sure interesting I I interesting <laughs> you think i don't know I, I i just i just i really just don't think chase daniel was good tonight in, in all honesty i really don't think chase daniel was good by by any approach by any means I thought this guy was pretty good tonight. I thought this guy was pretty good tonight. We're going to hear from him. But again, guys, kind of some big, you know, kind of the main takeaways from tonight, right? So, if we need a recap tonight, here's what it was. First of all, the quarterback situation. I don't trust Chase Daniel nor Easton Stick to start a game. But at least Chase Daniel knows the offense. Okay? That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Trey Pipkins was terrible. We're going to get to that. In a relatively low-scoring affair, here's what we need to know. The two teams combined for 25 penalties. The Chargers forced three turnovers, but only managed to capitalize off of one of them. The offense was 2 of 11 on third down situations. The offensive unit only combined for 171 yards of total offense. There were three stars to this game, in my opinion. Number one was Easton Stick. He was 10 of 14, 85 passing yards, one touchdown, three carries for 15 yards. Number two edge rusher we got from the New York football giants, Kyler Fackrell. Two tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss, and three quarterback hits. And number three, Nick Neiman. Eight total tackles, one tackle for loss. Stick made the battle for Herbert's backup a lot more interesting. Chase Daniels did not help his cause, only amassing 60 yards on 21 passing attempts in addition to an INT. Here's the deal, everybody, my fellow hogs. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, Stick and Daniel were sacked five times and pressured on multiple occasions, which particularly speaks for the lack of offensive line depth, including Trey Pipkins who was absolutely terrible. The third-round pick in 2019 has not proven himself at all as a reliable swing tackle. Quite frankly, he's been a not least in reliable swing tackle. He's been a god-awful swing tackle. Now we go to the backfield. That is directly correlated to the offensive line. Neither Josh Kelly or Larry Roundtree separated themselves in the battle of the backfield as the only two combined for 21 yards on 15 carries. Let me do my little French. That's about 1.4 yards per carry. However, they both made some nice plays in the passing game. The interior part of the defensive line was strong in the pass rush department. Kyler Fackrell led that front. But on the run defensive department, the Niners averaged over four yards per carry. And Merrill, sure. And this is also unfortunately true. 
Balaga will go down. But it's Bulaga, not Bolaga. Luckily for the guys in the trenches, the second line of defense was nearly always there to clean things up, including Nicholas Neiman and Cole Christensen, who combined for 15 tackles. There wasn't much to take away from the kicking battle, but Michael Badgley did hit a field goal from 52 yards out, which where he really struggles beyond 40. Speaking of special teams coverage, the coverage wasn't good again. The Niners averaged 20 yards on their kick returns and 18 yards on their punt returns. Guys, we close out the preseason slate on the road in Seattle, Saturday, August 28th. And that's that. Let's hear from ASJ. No, they just said you can't take your helmet out, so I know now. Just a rookie mistake. What did, uh, what did Jerwin say to you as he got to the sideline after the interception? Uh, he was he was congratulating me, but uh, at the end of the day, we still had to get the other plays that happened before that corrected and make sure that everything was good for defense. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just being. I just want to make plays for my team and uh, have whatever I got to do for us to win. That's what I want to do. Guys, just. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, guys, make sure you all follow me on Twitter, man, at Hogborn at Alex. Just shoot me a DM, bro. My DMs are open, baby. Go ahead and slide. By the way, Chargers linebacker Amin Ogbong Bem, I can't say his I'm not going to even try, suffered a sprained AC joint. He was also coming on the last few weeks. Is this louder? Here we go, guys. Here we go. We got, we got, we got some better. We got some better video. We got some better video footage from Fernando Ramirez, or a little bit. How exciting was it to get your first interception? Oh, it was really exciting, but uh, I just want to make enough play for my team to win, so we can win. So. <laughs> Guys, Alex makes a great point. Who cares? There's a lot of guys on the injury report, but none of the important. We're good. <laughs> We're good for right now. <laughs> Uh, those uh, great receivers over there, uh, how they move, and just seeing different body types of receivers in the NFL that you're going to see every guy is not the same. So I just try to uh, change my technique for each guy and know who I'm go going against. Do you feel like you separated yourself for that second cornerback position? Uh, no, that's still a competition. I mean, I really haven't done anything. That one pick was nothing. So I'm just going to keep my head down and keep grinding. But uh, Good man. Great answer. It's not even a I just want to get better in whatever the team wants me to do. That's what I'm going to do. I like him in the slot. I like him in the slot. Uh, I feel like I'm comfortable anywhere on the field. Um, I mean, that's what uh, I told him in the pre-drive process. I could play inside, I could play outside. So that's what he's doing. He's just trying to use, um, utilize my versatility. Yeah, I was inside. I was at slot that play. Uh, in this defense, um, how much more comfortable, comfortable do you feel as defense from the offseason to just having, you know, 15, 17 days of training camp with two preseason games? Thanks, bro. Oh, I feel very much more comfortable now. Uh, OTAs, we kind of, like, installed the whole playbook, and then we got that little break off. And then after that, we kind of reinstalled it. So I was kind of already ahead of the game and – um I feel like I'm more comfortable with the scheme and knowing where. Guys, this guy is 100% starting, okay? This guy's 100% starting week one. That's That conversation is long gone, okay? That conversation is long gone. It is long gone. It is, I'll say it one more time, long gone. I want to hear from Easton Stick, though. 
Yeah, you, you're just kind of playing at, at that point, right? And it's, um, you know, it, it got stretched so far that it was either someone was going to pop late or it was going to get tossed out of bounds. And uh, lucky for us, Josh found a way to kind of uncover there in the back. And It's a great play by Easton State, guys. Rolling out, rolling out in that situation. It's a good play. Um, a few guys kind of attached to me, and there was enough of a window to, to kind of sneak it in there. Yeah, um, it's been a lot of fun kind of working through it with Justin, with Chase. Um, you know, Chase has so much knowledge of it being with Joe for, for such a long period of time. Uh, their relationship is, is really cool. And so I think Justin and I learned a, a bunch from him. Um, and we're just kind of all working through this thing together. You know, every single day is trying to, to learn a little bit better, learn each other, how it all kind of fits together, and then just keep learning from Joe. And I think these reps out here, um, you know, live real reps um, are the best way to do that. How do you not root for this guy? I'm rooting for this guy. I'm rooting for this guy. I th I think, guys, I think Brandon Staley can go three quarterbacks. I really do. I really do. Where do you feel like you stand in this competition that you and Chase have both gotten? Here they're asking, where does he stand in this competition between him and Daniel? Where do you feel like you stand? You know, honestly, not, just not something I'm, I'm focused on. Um, for me, you know, just trying to improve. I know when I started camp, I wanted to, to get to the end and, and feel like I was a better player. Um, and I think I'm on on the way of doing that. I think every time I've gone out there, I feel a little bit more comfortable, um, you know, every day at practice, understanding a little bit better what we're trying to do, why we're calling things. Um, so that's really all I'm looking for is to, to try to improve. And we'll let all that stuff take care of it at the end of the day because um, I know everybody in there wants to win football games. So that, that's the bottom line. And so we're just trying to improve and, and, and get ready to go. Awesome answer. Guys, imagine naming your – imagine having the name Easton Stick. Imagine having the name Easton Stick. It's a pretty fucking great name. Guys. Let's talk about that throw to Jalen Guyton. Can I find that again? That was an I'm a fucking NFL quarterback throw to Jalen Guyton. What a throw. Crazy. It was a, it was a perfect throw. Let me try and find it. Where do I find this throw? Guys, when was it again in the game? Oh, here it is. Guys, take a look at this throw. Guys, this throw is this is this was like, oh my god, Easton Stick is actually like a quarterback. Two picks as well. It's been awesome. They definitely have the defense, defensive line been rotating and Dude, dude, that is on the money. Yeah, you love it. You love it. As Logan Blondell says, that was a great throw. Guys, that was a throw where I was like, holy shit, he's going to compete with Chase Daniel Logan. Seems like you're new to the channel, man. Hope you subscribe. Join the hogwash. We've been seeing those comps a lot. We'll see. Guys, I made a Charger sleeper video about a month ago. Easton Stick was one of them. Kyler Fackrell was another one of them. Hey, hey, hey. I'm good at this shit. All right. I'm good at this shit. Guys, go. I'm gonna I'm gonna post a link. When did I post this video? Five sleepers for the Chargers. Who was the first one? Who was the first one? Is this man Kyler Fackrell? Whoa! Whoa, guys. Guys. I'll message you, Alex. Who was my first one? July 31st. The time for the Los Angeles Chargers is this man, Kyler Fackrell. 
Here's the thing, all right? We all know they're starting edge defenders and Joey Bosa and Uchenna Nuos. Who did I say next? I don't even remember who I said for all my sleepers. Fantastic against the run. Who did I say next? I'm definitely right. My next sleeper to watch is linebacker Kaiser White. Again, everybody, we know, we believe, of course. Hey, Kaiser wasn't bad tonight. I I'm seeing how I'm seeing how bad I was at this. Uh oh. It's quarterback Easton Stick. Uh oh. Uh oh. White, my second sleeper from Los Angeles Chargers. Here's my third sleeper. Uh oh. And this one is actually very, very interesting. It's quarterback Easton Stick. Y'all already know the name, Taysom Hill. From the New Orleans Saints, the dude got paid. He was their Swiss Army knife. We all know Chase Daniel is most likely going to be quarterback number two in the backup behind Justin Herbert. Chase Daniel's a seasoned backup, very good experience, a guy that you want your young star quarterback to learn. But guys, look at the throw. Look at the throw. They've been doing a great job. They've been working all week against these guys, so they kind of know what they're going to get with you. It's a money throw by Easton. Yeah, it was just a really good scheme. You know, something, um, you know, Joe saw and we kind of put in uh, almost a little bit last minute. Just a, an opportunity to give a guy that, you know, a chance to make a play. JG did a great job. His release was awesome. And, and he's one of those guys that he, he can fly. So he just put it out there um, and we got a good coverage for it. So credit to, to Joe for getting it in and then JG for making the play. Yeah, it's pretty cool, uh, you know, going back and forth and, and seeing Trey out there and getting a chance to spend a little bit of time with him this week. But um, I know he would say the same thing. You know, Fargo, North Dakota means a ton to us. And uh, that program is really special. Um, I think it's a reason I have an opportunity to, to keep playing football today. And so I uh, really appreciate Coach Hedberg. I love that guy um, a ton. And he means a lot to me. And so uh, it was a lot of fun to, to be out there with Trey and get a chance to represent the Bison a little bit. Whoa. 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 That is a shot. Whoa. Guys, look what Brandon Staley said. Look what Brandon Staley said regarding Pipkins. Regarding the struggles of OTs, Trey Pipkins, and Storm Norton today, Brandon Staley said, quote, I think those two guys got a real accurate picture of where they are at. Yup. Imagine if the Chargers actually took, like, a wide receiver in the first. Oh, thank God. Thank God. No sugarcoating. You got to love it. Yes, sir. Oh, you love it. Guys, let me know if you have any other questions from tonight's game. If not, I will wrap it up. I am losing my voice. Thank God I have a Padres off day tomorrow, man. <sighs> losing my voice. Let me know if you guys have any questions from, from tonight's game, any comments, any concerns. If not, we will wrap it up from the Hogwatch. Appreciate everyone's support, guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Hogborna. Like the stream. All that screaming at the TV. Facts, bro. Facts, bro. Seems like you knew the channel, JMJ, man.
Guys, we're building this Chargers community, guys. I built I built a I built a ever so growing Padres community and we're building this Chargers community right now on the Hogwatch. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please join the Discord. We we need we have about 100 200 people who talk in the Padres channel. We're growing this Chargers channel, guys. I need people to talk to on game days. We're going to grow this Chargers channel. Make sure you hit the like button. Turn on the post bell notifications. Follow me on Twitter at HogBorna down below. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Discord. And I hope everyone has a great end to your weekend. I think we got to end it. I think we got to end it. On a go charges. I think we got to end it on this, guys. To say thank you to our great firefighters. We have, without any doubt, the greatest, the bravest, the best experienced firefighters in the world. We want to thank also all the more, and I want to thank all. Did he not? National Guard for their great work. And I want to thank all the thousands and thousands of volunteers for all their work. Thank you very much. He didn't even say it. He didn't even say it. When did he, when does he say it? Sure. We'll take it. All right, everybody. Have a great night, guys. Go Chargers! Good night, everybody. Take care.